we had a story that we needed to take a closer look at because this is probably one of the biggest acquisitions that we're going to hear about all year. And it comes courtesy of our friends over at AMD. They're opening up the wallet to the tune of nearly $5 billion to buy ZT Systems. You may not have heard of them before, but AMD and ZT Systems have had a pre-existing partnership. They collaborated on the, the building the Epic processor line. Now, that's not their biggest customer, though, because ZT's biggest customers were AWS and Azure. ZT Systems specializes in hyperscale AI systems that you buy in rack quantities. This move follows a very recent acquisition of Silo AI, which we did cover here on the rundown. And their last really big acquisition was, of course, Xilinx. There's a lot to unpack here. There's been a lot of discussion from uh, the Future and Group analysts, and there's a lot of buzz about this deal so far. But Stephen, I wanted to start off with you. What was it about ZT Systems that made them so attractive to AMD in the first place? You know, it's interesting that um, I believe that this was probably a combination of strategic and opportunistic goals on the part of AMD management. So uh, leading up to this acquisition, there was some news that Foxconn is going to be increasingly involved in NVIDIA's supply chain for their big rack scale AI systems. Now you might know that part of the success that NVIDIA has had in the AI market is the fact that they have basically pre-integrated rack scale systems that comprise GPUs, CPUs, networking, et cetera. And those rack scale systems, you know, DGX and, 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 and the like, uh, make up a, I don't want to say the majority, but a lot of NVIDIA's sales and success um, in shipping GPUs. Now, AMD absolutely has a competitive product with NVIDIA in the AI GPU space. Their uh, MI250X and MI300X are really, really excellent, excellent products. But they have seen, let's say, modest sales success because frankly, the NVIDIA juggernaut is hard to derail. They have so many things that AMD didn't have. They have relationships. They've got this incredible software stack and uh, allegiance to the CUDA uh, platform from software developers. And of course, uh, they also have this incredible integrated rack scale AI concept, which has really allowed AMD, or I'm sorry, allowed NVIDIA to extract maximum revenue and build maximum market share in this sort of AI supercomputer space. In fact, one of the things that's benefiting NVIDIA is that their rack scale systems specify the use of, for example, Mellanox switches, which is owned by NVIDIA, um, as well as, of course, their GPUs and their CPUs. So, so essentially, NVIDIA has built this tremendous business selling not GPUs, but entire systems, integrated systems. Now, if you were AMD and you wanted to break into that market because you said, you know, we've got a competitive GPU product, we have an absolutely excellent CPU product. We've got, um, you know, networking, uh, IPUs and things like that. How do we break into this market? Well, there's a couple of things you need. One thing you need is you need to be able to kind of shake some people loose from the CUDA ecosystem. And to me, that's what the acquisition of Silo AI was all about. But the other thing you need is you need a competitor for DGX. You need a competitor for this rack scale market. And you need somebody who really really deeply understands the needs of the customers that are out there buying literally billions of dollars of rack scale GPU clusters for AI. Well, one company in that space that has gone unsung is ZT Systems. Essentially, this company, which has been around for a long time doing um, basically building servers and, and PCs and rack scale, so, you know, they, they basically manufacture the stuff that we think of when we think of computer servers and computer hardware. Um, and they manufacture these things, interestingly, in the US and Europe. And they have very, very good relationships to some of the largest buyers of systems in the market. The problem for ZT is that they are facing a lot of competition from Taiwan, um, from China, 
from uh, companies like you know Foxconn and so on that are out there um, building systems for hyperscalers, building systems for OEMs. And Foxconn and NVIDIA are getting closer and closer together in terms of building these um, integrated AI systems. And that kind of leaves ZT out in the cold. So I suspect that what happened was uh, the ZT management and the AMD management, who are very friendly with each other, uh, you know, they got together and they said, you know, our expertise in building rack scale systems generally and AI systems specifically, our familiarity with AMD, you know, that could be really useful to you. And I'm sure that AMD looked at it and said, yeah, that's great. But most of your revenue comes from literally manufacturing and selling um, integrated servers, which is what our customers do. And we don't really want to be in that market. What are we going to do here? Well, if the price is right, you can do some cool things. And so essentially, AMD is going to spend you know, $4.9 billion on this thing. But then they're immediately going to turn around and sell the manufacturing assets that make basically all of ZT's revenues. If you look at ZT's numbers, um, it's actually pretty likely that AMD may recoup some or maybe even all, or gosh, they might even make a profit reselling ZT's manufacturing capability to some other OEM or ODM. And there are lots of companies that would really benefit from having server and systems manufacturing in the US and Europe. I think there's going to be a long line of customers waiting to bid on that aspect of ZT. Meanwhile, AMD gets to walk off with a thousand employees that are experts at designing and building rack scale infrastructure, designing and building basically competitors to NVIDIA's crown jewel, working with NVIDIA's biggest customers. And AMD is going to leverage that to compete with NVIDIA, just like they're going to leverage Silo AI to compete with CUDA, just like they're going to leverage uh, their you know, GPU assets to compete with NVIDIA's GPU assets and their CPU assets. Well, they're way out on the lead on that. So this really is a masterstroke if you look at it from that perspective. Well, it's funny to me because the way you describe it, where you know we're going to take what you do and we're going to sell those pieces off or in, in the whole, and we're going to keep the people that we know we can work with, that almost sounds like an aqua hire. We've seen that a number of times here in the industry where we want your brain trust. We want the people who are doing the forward thinking things. We don't want the the line workers. We don't want the 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 folks who are just kind of out there putting things in boxes. And and I can see where that value for AMD could be there, right? Like we're we're developing the solution, but I do absolutely agree with you that they don't want to compete against their partners, right? Like this is one of the things that we've seen from other companies in the space a lot is they think that they can get to a point where they can kind of eclipse what their partners are doing. And we saw that under Bob Swan's Intel, right? Intel's going to make boards, Intel's going to make servers, Intel's going to do all this stuff. And then companies kind of look around and go, well, if you're making the stuff that I'm making, why am I buying from you? I mean, other than I have to. So I think in, it, that AMD is doing it the right way. Like they're saying, we want to develop this. We basically want to become a, an NVIDIA competitor, but we need a shot in the arm to get there. We have good technology. We don't have the, the holistic view of how to do this. And this is actually one of the things that uh, I recorded a podcast with a couple of our Tech Field Day delegates about here just recently, where we talked about this idea that, that the juggernaut behind things like InfiniBand and NVLink is not that they are superior technology. It's that when you buy a rack scale NVIDIA system, you're going to use them. You don't have a choice. You don't get to go out and say, well, I want to use these Ethernet switches with this CPU. And that is something that's crippling anybody who is a legitimate competitor to NVIDIA right now. Um, I go back far enough that I remember things like, you know, HP's uh, blade server installations and IBM's blade center, where it's IBM devices in an IBM rack and you buy it directly from them and you don't have any options. Like you, you, you get to pick how much storage it has. Like that's it. And, and you, some people just chafe at that idea. They're like, oh, well, no, I need to have complete and total control over my IT infrastructure. No, you don't. <laughs> you want it to work. And if you don't believe that, go look at the cloud. 
the cloud is effectively what a rack scale architecture looks like at scale, right? Like I don't care what the server is. I'm going to go buy that. And that's what AMD is hoping for. But they can't do that if they have to ingest all of this manufacturing capability that quite honestly doesn't really like synergize with what they've got right now. So yeah, why not sell it off, recoup some of that investment? You're going to have to eat some salaries for these smart people, but let's be fair, they're going to pay for themselves. And, and you give them a head start because what you don't have to deal with is technical debt. And, and I, I hate to simplify it that much for our audience at home, but a factory is the, the absolute epitome of technical debt. You can't upgrade those things very easily. And a lot of other people in the industry are finding that out real fast is that if you have existing uh, product lines that are tooled to do things in a certain way, you that that ship doesn't turn very fast. You've got to spend money to do that. And here, this looks like a steal because let's be honest, $5 billion to a company like AMD is not that big of a deal. And, and you notice that because they didn't do this as a stock deal. They, they paid cash and took on a little debt to do this. I think that like what you said, they're going to turn this around, make real quick money and get these folks working on something that quite honestly is more valuable in the long run to a company like AMD. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, 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 you mentioned technical debt, actual debt. You know, I mean, I'm not a financial analyst, but I know a little bit about the space. And I think a lot of us have to be realistic about the finances that are going on here. You know, a company like AMD is looking, has a PE ratio of, you know, I don't know, let's say 20 times, you know, revenue. And, and in other words, uh, people look at the, at the company and they're like, man, you know, yeah, your annual revenue is X, but I think you've got this long, long runway. I think you've got this incredibly bright future. I think you've got growth ahead of you. I'm going to give you 20 times that in terms of stock valuation for the company, because I believe in the trajectory. I believe where you're going. I believe in this. Um, a company like ZT Systems that manufactures servers, uh, their equivalent, which is not really a PE ratio, but if you look at it, kind of like what are these companies valued at? It's not even one X. Uh, in other words, you know, uh, an investor is going to look at a, a, a factory that makes servers and they're going to say, well, you took in $10 billion last year. There's no saying you're going to take in $10 billion next year. You've got all this you know, investment, you've got such a low margin on your products. I mean, you're making such very, very little profit. You know, I'll, I'll give you, I don't know, half of, of your annual revenue in order to buy the company. Uh, and that's exactly what AMD did here is that they are essentially buying ZT systems for about half of their projected annualized revenues. And, and it shows sort of the problem of manufacturing versus uh, sort of that Silicon Valley software company kind of thing. There's no way that AMD wants to get into an incredibly low margin business like building and selling rack scale servers. They want access to NVIDIA style uh, profit margins. And this theoretically is a very clever way to get that because essentially they're gonna walk in, they're gonna buy this thing at half of annual revenue, they're gonna sell this thing at half of annual revenue and they're gonna walk out with the value that they want. The interesting thing to me is kind of what this means for the overall space, because if you look at the companies, uh, the, 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 the numbers from the big companies that are selling NVIDIA based AI supercomputers, I'm going to say, um, you'll realize that they're not actually making much money on those in terms of margin. In fact, they're basically making nothing. NVIDIA gets all the profit from those servers. AMD, if you look at the, the ODMs that are selling AMD-based servers, they're still making pretty healthy margins, which means that AMD is leaving money on the table from AMD's perspective. Uh, I'm sure from HPE or Dell or Supermicro or Lenovo or somebody, you're like, yes, thank you. That's not on the table. That's in my pocket. Um, I think that AMD wants access to those kind of NVIDIA-style mar margins because they've got NVIDIA style products. And I think that, again, that's what this is all about. This is about in in increasing margin. And let me tell you, if AMD can even have modest success selling against NVIDIA and, and Blackwell, AMD is going absolutely through the roof, not just in terms of Wall Street financial nonsense, but in terms of overall value and positioning in the industry. And acquisitions like this are gonna get them there. Um, uh, this is 
absolutely um this is a a grand slam home run in terms of what it means for nvidia uh, or uh, <laughs> against nvidia for for amd um i really just I, you know maybe amd is uh, is still trailing in the game because nvidia has this incredible market share um but 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 this is this is really really going to rocket them forward yeah i agree and you know when it comes to market share um the king of the mountain is going to be the one who has all of the toys and and i think that that's where amd wants to be is they want to they want to steal as much of that market share as they can but they know that the path forward is to have a completely integrated solution 